My kids love to play in our yard, and when I can make the time, I love to just sit out here and watch them. But it wasn't all that long ago that I had to forbid them from going into our yard at all. It wasn't all that long ago that we ended up paying a lot of money just to make our house livable again. Money that we wouldn't have had to spend if we'd paid more attention to a few simple things. Instead, we had to learn the hard way. In fact, it was the children who discovered we had a problem. They were playing in the backyard one day and discovered that part of our yard was soggy, very soggy. They called me over and I noticed that the water had an unpleasant odor. I wasn't sure what it was, but I got all the kids out of the yard right away. <laughs> Good thing I did. We found out later that what they were walking around in was raw sewage. My husband came home, but he wasn't sure what it was either. So I suggested that we call the township to see if they could help. Turned out that was just the right thing to do. The woman at the township office asked if we had a septic system. At the time, well, we'd only lived here about four years, and how and where our sewage left the house was the furthest thing from my mind. We soon found out that we do, in fact, have a septic system, but at that point, we simply didn't know. They say ignorance is bliss. Well, in this case, ignorance ended up causing us a lot of hassle and costing us a lot of money. Believe me, I learned more about septic systems in the last couple of months than I thought I ever would. For example, I had thought people with septic systems were in a very small minority. But in fact, one-third of Pennsylvania residents currently depend on septic systems to treat their sewage. And I learned a lot of good practical knowledge along the way as well. Stick around the next few minutes and learn how to avoid the costly mistakes we made and how to keep your money from going down the drain. There are two good reasons to take care of your septic system. One is money and the other is health. While it may cost $100 to $200 every few years to pump out a septic tank, that's still less than my sister's sewer bill and far less than the three to 15,000 it costs to replace an entire system if it becomes irreparably damaged. And if the system does become damaged, there's an increased risk that groundwater, wells, streams, and ponds around the home can become contaminated, exposing your family and neighbors to serious illness. Unlike a public sewer, where the waste flows off the homeowner's property through a network of pipes to a treatment plant, septic systems are sewage systems located on the homeowner's property. They treat and dispose of sewage through natural processes. The more I discovered about septic systems and how they work, the more I discovered why it is so important to take care of them. Let me take you through their basic operation. Sewage is made up of water from bathing and washing, as well as human waste. It flows first to the septic tank. Here, the primary treatment of the sewage takes place. The heavier solid materials settle to the bottom of the tank, forming a sludge layer. Lighter materials like grease and fats float to the top, forming a scum layer. The relatively clear liquid in the middle is called effluent. As the layers separate, bacteria in the tank begin to break down the materials, a process that will continue even after the effluent leaves the tank. In more modern systems, the effluent then flows to a second compartment where the scum and sludge are again separated from the effluent. From this second compartment, the effluent flows to either a pump tank in a pressurized system or a distribution box in a gravity flow system. In a gravity flow system, the effluent then flows evenly from the distribution box to an absorption area called a drain field. The drain field consists of perforated pipes running through gravel-filled beds or trenches. The effluent flows out of the holes in the pipe and percolates down through the gravel into the soil. As the effluent enters and flows through the soil, many of the bacteria that can cause diseases are filtered out. Smaller germs, such as viruses, are absorbed by the soil until they are destroyed. The soil also retains certain chemicals, including phosphorus, and some forms of nitrogen. By the time the water flows down to the water table, it is free of impurities. In places where effluent can't flow downhill by gravity or in more complex septic systems, pumps must be used. Here, the effluent flows from a septic tank into another tank 
sometimes called a pump tank or dose tank. The effluent accumulates in this tank until the pump sends a measured volume or dose of effluent under pressure to the drain field. Where there is not enough soil under the drain field for filtering to happen properly, elevated mounds are constructed to create the necessary soil depth. Pressure systems are then used to send the effluent to the top of the mound. Unfortunately, many people are not concerned about whether their septic system is working properly until something goes wrong. When their plumbing fixtures stop draining, their yard gets soggy, or the well water becomes contaminated. They don't realize that untreated sewage can be a major health hazard, and that a soggy yard is only one of the signs you might see. It pays to know the signs that indicate your system is having trouble. Slowly draining fixtures, particularly after a rain, sewage backing up into your toilets, tubs, or sinks, extremely soggy soil over the drain field, especially when accompanied by the smell of raw sewage, broken or cracked pipes that may or may not stick out of the ground, an alarm flashing or beeping in the house, garage, or in the yard indicating that a pump is not working properly, or tests show your well is contaminated. The key to avoiding all of these trouble signs is to follow a few simple rules. The first thing you need to know is where your system is. You should know the location of both the septic tank and the drain field. If you don't know where your septic system is, you can contact your township for more information. If no records can be found, there are devices available to help you locate underground tanks and drain fields. The more wastewater that flows to the system, the more the system becomes burdened. As the additional water flows in, it churns the water in the septic tank, preventing the solids from settling out. As a result, the water that leaves the septic tank contains solid materials that can clog and eventually destroy your drain field. Garbage disposals can create a similar problem by grinding materials so small that they don't settle out in the septic tank. Septic tank owners should keep their use of garbage disposals to a bare minimum. Simple practices like spacing out your clothes washing through the week and turning off running water can go a long way toward keeping your system functioning properly. Installing simple devices like flow restricting faucets and shower heads and low flow toilets can have a big impact as well, as can repairing dripping faucets and toilets immediately. Make sure water from roof gutters and foundation drains does not flow over the drain field. This too can overburden and overload it. Chemicals such as solvents, oils, paints, thinners, disinfectants, pesticides, and other substances are poison to your septic system. They can kill the bacteria that will help purify sewage and can also contaminate groundwater. Avoid additives. Commercial septic tank additives have not been proven effective. In some cases, they can even harm your system. So save money and avoid them. Protect against physical damage. Keep the soil over the drain field covered with vegetation, preferably grass, to prevent soil erosion. Don't drive heavy vehicles over the system. Their weight can compact the soil and break the pipes, which can cause system failure. Maintain the natural shape of the land immediately downslope of the system. Do not build any structure over the system and its repair area. Don't cover the drain field or the tank with asphalt or concrete. If your water supply comes from a well, have your water tested regularly for signs of contamination. To keep it functioning at its best, have your septic tank inspected and pumped regularly. The inspection should be conducted at least as often as you have it pumped. During the inspection, the inspector should measure the thickness of the scum and the depth of the sludge. A typical size septic tank for a three-bedroom house that is home to a family of four might need to be pumped every three years. Smaller tanks or houses with more people will need to be pumped more often. For example, that same typical tank could serve a family of two for a little over five years between pumpings, 
but a family of six using the same tank will need to have the tank pumped every year or two on average. They should also check the condition of the inlet and outlet baffles. Inspectors should not enter the tank. When you do get your tank pumped, make sure all tanks or compartments are pumped. If you don't pump often enough, the sludge gets too high and can leave the septic tank entering the drain field. When this happens, the sludge fouls the drain field, plugging the soil and preventing the effluent from flowing through. The result? A drain field that doesn't work. That's what happened to us. What we could have prevented ended up costing us a lot of time, money, and aggravation. But you can skip all of that if you just keep in mind the common sense practices we talked about, like reducing water use, keeping grease and solids out of your system, and properly landscaping the yard to keep surface water away from the tank and drain field. These practices, combined with regular pumping and inspections, will help ensure a long life for your system and a healthy and hassle-free experience for your family and help to keep your money from going down the drain.